أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته respected brothers tonight allow me to answer something what's the legality of tahlil what's the legality of tahlil among Muslims something the Wahhabis or Salafis term to be an innovation or bid'ah in Islam and also insult those people who do so. What are some of its legalities? Before I can reach that, the definition of tahlil is a form of dhikr, remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by uttering La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. Understand? It's that kind of utterance. Therefore, whenever we do this one, saying La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah, saying that there is no God but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are emphasizing, you understand? Our belief in the monotheism of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some Muslims like Wahhabis or Salafis term it to be innovation. Previously we looked at the legality of praying for our deceased relatives and friends. And we said that Prophet Muhammad was the first one to emphasize so by praying for his wife Khadija, his uncle Abu Talib, his mom Amina. May Allah's peace be upon them and his father Abdullah, plus other believers. Prophet Muhammad emphasized this so as we saw in the Sunni brothers' books. And we also said that in Sahih Bukhari, Babu Ziyat al Kubul, and other books like Sahih Muslim, they all encourage praying for our deceased relatives and friends. We also said in Surah Al Hashir, verse number 10, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about it. That waladhina jao min baadihim yakuluna rabbana igfirrana wali ikhwanina aladhina sabakuna bil iman. Up to the end of the verse, that those people who come after, they ask for Allah's forgiveness. And also pray for those ones who passed away. You understand? Therefore it's not bidia as we saw. And among the segments of praying for our deceased relatives and friends, this one is inclusive. What we call tahalil, the uttering la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah. When we're going, or so, when someone passed away near his dead body, or when we are escorting him to his grave, the question is what's its legality? We define the sunnah of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam to be in three parts. Number one, qawlihi. His words, holy words, whatever he says, his wahi. So at Najim, verse number three to four. Wa mayanthi ku anil hawa in huwa illa wahiun yuha. His inspiration is order from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa fi'ilihi. And also his actions. We said in Surah Al-Ahzab, verse number 21, that is Uswatun Hasana, the best example to follow. Therefore, even his actions, whatever he does, is a lesson to us and takririhi and also the silent approvals the silent approvals something he saw and he never said anything therefore there were habits or salafis who keep chanting what is the legality what is the legality you should not also forget the silent approvals whatever you find that doesn't contradict with holy quran and the authentic words, a hadith of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, and also the authentic words from his right successors, the Ahl Bayt alayhi wa wa sallam, whom we say that loving and following is mandatory in Quranic chapter 42 verse number 23, who are also infallible in Quranic chapter 33 verse number 33. In case we find that this action is not contradicting 
with their action is also a sunnah of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam is not bid'a. Something bid'a is that one which people invented. But in case something doesn't contradict with Holy Quran and the ahadith of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, there is no bid'a in it. The famous saying says, Zikrullah ala kulli had. Remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not got any time, every time. We can remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's not having a special period. We have got a lot of tradition, as tradition is, and also strong verses emphasizing this one. The legality of tahalil. Number one, we shall use like two verses or three verses due to time factor. Quran chapter 33, also at Ahzab, verse number 41. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about the legality of Azkar, remembering him, praising him by saying like, La ilaha illallah, O Allahu Akbar, O subhanallah, O alhamdulillah, each and everything. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about them, the tahalil, the tasbih, like after praying, you say Allahu Akbar 34 times, Alhamdulillah 33 times, Subhanallah 33 times, each and everything the salawat. In Quran chapter 33, verse number 41, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we said when he's talking about Azkar, he says, Ya ayuhaladzina aman, or you who believe, you beautiful sisters and great brothers following, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about us, the believers, he says, Ya ayuhaladzina aman, or you who believe, dhikrullaha dhikran kathira. You understand? That we should remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala frequently. You understand? Here, some Wahhabis or Salafis, the Wahhabi brothers or Salafis, they say, yes, you can do zikr, no problem, but you do it inside your heart. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about this verse, is not putting any string attached. The verse is open. He's not saying that do it in your heart, do it at this time. Anytime you can glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When someone has passed away, there is no problem. And when we say it, when we are mentioning the better, why? Because it can also help those ones who don't know how to say it, learn it. That's tablig, which we said in Quran chapter 9, verse number 71. That the believing uh, brothers and sisters are friends to each other. They encourage or emphasize doing of good actions. And they also forbid evil. They pray, they fast. They help each other. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ending this verse, he says, Those are the people whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives, due to this azkal here, due to this azkal here, for instance, saying, La ilaha illallah, when you're taking someone to bury him, he forgives you and he also forgives the, the one who has passed away because the reward goes to him. So to know verse number 10 to 12, he talks about this one, the merits of forgiveness. Makes it rain, he forgives you, changes your ugly sins into action, into good actions. Furkan verse number, uh, so Furkan verse number 72, 71, increases your lifespan, so hold verse number 3. And also verse number, uh, the 11th and 12th verse of Swat so Nuh, grants you pious offsprings, increases your sustenance, grants you good life and also paradise. Therefore, whenever we do azkal, it's not bid'a. Whenever we mention them, like tahlil, there is no problem with it. There is no bid'a in it. To go further, we've seen here, the verse is open when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, remember, is uh, reminding us, when he's commanding us that zikr is not having any special time. Anytime we can do so, when someone has passed away, they better. 
Because instead of like people talking about politics and the rest, they can do this one as the car, remembering Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, remembering him. Which can also help this person who has passed away and act as a lesson to us in order to mend our actions. In Surah an Am, verse number 160, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about it, he says, Manja'a bil hasana, that however comes with some good action, he enjoys 10 rewards of it. Therefore, in, someone, in case maybe you want to, uh, to bury someone, maybe you're praying for him, maybe you're escorting him to his grave, and someone starts it, he, he benefits, as we're saying. Therefore, there is no bid in it when we utter it. Brothers and sisters, let's learn our religion instead of inheriting it from people. Just stop this business of saying Sheikh Flan said, Sheikh Flan said, who is Sheikh Flan? Is he an infallible person? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Furqan that on the day of judgment, someone will regret the one he took to be his friend for having misled him. Let's apply logic and keep searching for knowledge. Right now, this lesson is you can enjoy them in your bed, in your house, in your office, Everything now, you just put in the address of a scholar you want. After finishing that, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking about another merit of tahalil, let's say like tahalil, of praising him. When he's talking about the story of one of the great prophets, Prophet Yunus alayhi salatu wa salam, he says that falaula annahu kana min al-musabbihin lalabitha fi batinihi ila yawmi yub'athun. Had he not have been among those ones who glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if he wasn't among those ones who glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he could have been in that belly of that fish till the day of resurrection if he, he had not praised Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, glorified him. What we want here is one. Whenever we glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it changes our destiny. It helps us who are still breathing and also this person. Because the reward goes to him, then we take king to bury. Another merit of such glorification is like tahalil during tahalil. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about it in Surah Al-Azab, verse number 43. And it says that whenever we do so, the tahalil praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he sends blessings to us and also his angels send blessings to us. To we, the one who's praying for this deceased person and also the deceased one. لِيُخْرِجَكُمْ مِنَ الظُّلْمَاتِ إِلَى النُورِ And he takes us also from uh, darkness to light. Therefore, so this dead person will get the rewards. You understand? From being punished to paradise. And also, and the same to us. Therefore, there is no any bidia in it. In brief, we said, Tahalil is the praising of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That when someone passes away, there is no problem saying, La ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah. There is no problem saying it. In your heart or loudly. But we said saying it loudly is the best. Because it also helps those ones who didn't know how to do it, how to recite it, learn to recite it. Because it acts as tablig as we said, guiding others and forbidding evil, which we say that it leads to forgiveness, plus its merits like increment in sustenance, lifespan, as we saw. So to number 71 and so to know verse number 10 to 12 and so to Furkan verse number 70 to 71 and, so, and also so to hold verse number 3 and other verses in so to Gafil and others. Therefore, there is no BDA in it. We answered it well. However, get it kindly share to others. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu, believers.